Hey gang, I got an offer for you today from LinkedIn. As business-to-business marketers, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You will also be able to drive results with targeting and measuring with their tools built specifically for B2B. And best of all, they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads also rank number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything you can be and get $100 credit. It's $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. It's linkedin.com slash MPN. P-N. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, everybody. I want to thank our sponsor for this season, SEMrush. SEMrush is an SEO tool that I use for my clients and I absolutely adore. It not only helps me audit the site to find out what's wrong or what needs to be improved on my client's sites from an SEO standpoint, but it also helps me to keep track of the keywords and key phrases we're going after, where they rank in Google and Bing. They have their own index. I think you can put parallel to Google's index. It is an incredible tool. If you go to our show notes for each episode, there is a link. If you click on it, it just tells them that we sent you. And you can try their tool out for free. I think it's for seven days right now. And it is an incredible tool. It is well worth the money. It's actually not that bad when you think about the the quality and the amount of value you're going to get from this tool. Check it out. Go to our show notes, and I um, hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Enigma. This is Seth Goldstein. Hey, everybody. This episode is with Evo Terra, one of the OGs of podcasting. He, along with Adam Curry, were some of the big people at the beginning. I think Leo Laporte was actually at the beginning, or close to the beginning, with Twit as well. So I got to interview Evo Terra today. And Evo is a down-to-earth, amazing guy. He does podcast pontifications, as you'll hear on the show. And we actually did this interview on... National International Podcasting Day, as a matter of fact. And I didn't plan it that way. It was just kind of worked out that way. So this was recorded live on StreamYard and went out to all the, you know, the social media platforms. But it was a real thrill to have Evo on the show because he was at the forefront of podcasting 1.0. And now he's at the forefront of podcasting 2.0. And it's just hearing his stories and how he got started in it and how he's run with it and how now he has Simpler Media, which is a consultancy to help businesses get found using podcasting. Really interesting guy, and I hope you really enjoy the show. So check it out. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. I'm Seth. With me is an OG of podcasting, not Adam Curry, but Evo Terra. Evo is the voice behind podcast pontifications. He is the chief bottle washer. I know it's kind of a cliche now of Simpler Media. He is a man about town in the podcast world. If you don't listen to podcast pontifications, you really need to. The insights he puts out are simply fantastic. And he's got a good voice. And you kind of need that. Like I don't have the best voice for podcasting, but whatever. But like, he has a voice that you just want to listen to. And you get 10 minutes a day, except for Thursday. Wait, does it end on Thursdays or is it Thursday, Friday? Yeah, Monday through Thursday. That's smart. I like when people like, don't commit themselves to, to do daily to an extent. So Evo, I guess let's start at the beginning. Who are you and why do we care? <laughs> mm, that's a great question. And I could get very existential on you, but let's keep it Ooh. simple into podcasting if we shall. So I've yeah. been podcasting since the beginning, since wow. 2004. 
October 14th, 2004. So oh, it's exact. <laughs> just about my 17th year anniversary by the time this thing is airing. So happy anniversary to me, I suppose. Yay! And I've done a lot in the podcasting space. I've been the, either the host or the co-host of something like 20 different podcasts in my, during my tenure. Um, as you mentioned, I run a podcast consultancy called Simpler Media. And for the podcasting community, my give back is I do this show called Podcast Pontifications, where I talk about the future of podcasting and ways that we working podcasters can make podcasting better. It's fantastic. If, and I put, just put it at the bottom of the screen for those who are watching us live or we're catching this videoed version. Video, that's a verb, I think. Sure, you can vid- you can verbify as anything. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> I make up words all the time. Just ask my wife. But anyhow, check it out at podcastpontifications.com. But so, Evo, pre-podcasting, if, if there's such a thing, how did you get into like, like how did you find your way to podcasting? I mean, that early. You know, it was it was an accident, like like many things, you know, a happy accident, serendipity, whatever you want to call it. Back in 2002, I got introduced to a guy who was doing an internet radio show and he needed a, needed a co-host. And I decided to join because it sounded like a fun thing to do. I hadn't been involved in audio production in in a number of years, but it was fun. And what my partner was really good at was calling up authors and asking if we could interview them about their latest book. So I've had the privilege of interviewing sci-fi greats like Ray Bradbury, Sir Arthur C. Clarke, and hundreds of others uh, that I've made friends with over the years. So we were doing that as an internet radio show back in 2002. So when podcasting happened, it was a very simple process for us. I was mostly in charge of the technical aspects like the website and RSS feeds. So I just kind of hacked together the pieces necessary. And we hit podcasting in, in October of 2004 with something like 200 episodes in our back catalog. So we kind of cheated, I guess is one way to look at it. Or you did it the way that people are realizing they need, need to do it now. Yeah. It's a batch like four. Well, all right. That, all right now 200 is a little excessive. Like, I'll give you that. But batch like three or four and then launch. So that you can yeah. like, so that you kind of have a buffer. I have yeah. never done that in the 10 years I've been doing podcasting. <laughs> I start and I'm like, oh, I should have probably put a buffer in here. And I I think I'm on my sixth sixth podcast of some sort, and I still haven't learned my lesson. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's sometimes, you know, the lesson we know certain things, but mm-hmm. the things that we do, you know, the great thing about knowing what you're doing in podcasting is, you know, if you and I wanted to, we could launch a podcast this afternoon. And yeah. we, we know all the things necessary to do that. But you and I both also know that that's not very sustainable. So no. when I'm working with other businesses that want a podcast, I counsel them to not do that. They all want to move really fast. But oh, I it's tell exciting. them it's, it's exciting. But we also want to get past excitement and be in sustainability. So can we take mm-hmm. a couple of months to really plan this out? It would be a really mm-hmm. good idea. It's a shiny object syndrome that I suffer from. I'm, I'm like, I'm with Ooh, you. new new idea. Let me just run with it. You know, mm-hmm. then usually mm-hmm. then as I'm running, I'm taking notes as I go, I, kind of like you know <laughs> working on the plane as it's flying, kind of. Yeah, like, yeah. Know. Well, I mean, how many different domain names do you own? Do you know? Oh my god. Yeah. Sixty or seventy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my number. I was over a hundred at one time, but I finally got rid of some. Although I think I'm starting to edge back up there again. So every little idea I had podcast directory of something, and then I discovered wait, oh, there's Podchaser. They're doing exactly because I was getting kicked off at <laughs> Apple, and I'm like, "There's gonna be something else." And then there's the podcast index. So I'm like, yep. "So I'm like, all right." And then they just came up for renewal. I'm like, "Yeah, I'll see those later." Yeah, that's me. Some things are on automatic renewal. I'll have until I die. Um, but some things are just like, "No, nope, I will just I will buy that for the year or two, and when it comes up again, we'll see if anything happened." And oftentimes it doesn't. Yeah, and they're so darn cheap. That's the thing. I mean, it's it just grab spots. the just grab the grab the name and you and so many of them, right? We don't have to rush to get our dot coms anymore now that we have all these generic top level domains. Like I'm a, of XYZ and mm. of media and FM and I even have a WTF domain. But you, so. you you figured out a way to use one of those. That's yeah. awesome. Make, make it clever. I had XYZ. I had a we have an FM for the other podcast that I do. Mm-hmm. But those are expensive. I think that's FMs actually are expensive. The, yeah, I think because they're actually country codes. I think they're. I think it's federated Nash something in Micronesia or something Mic- like Micronesia that, yeah. or Macedonia or something like that. So you're you're based down in Arizona. Yeah, I'm, I, 
Phoenix, a oh, gray area, gray area. And you, we were talking before the show that it is 70 and beautiful there. It's fantastic right now. Yeah, yeah. But Phoenix is where I started my podcasting journey back in 2004. Oh, really? Yeah, we started doing it here. Uh, and it, it's been done mostly here except for the three and a half years when I was living overseas. And so, Oh, yeah, then, I remember seeing you buy your an expat. expat. <laughs> Or ex ex expat, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we yeah. spent a year traveling, and then a couple of years living in Thailand, and Ooh. before we came back to the states in 2018. So a lot of my podcasting was done over there, wherever there happens to be. But that's kind of the nice thing about podcasting. At least now you can do it from wherever. I mean, you can set oh, yeah. your studio up. Heck, you can use your. I mean, all right, cringeworthy a little bit, but you can use your phone to record. Sure, you can. I mean. But- but you don't have to. I mean, that, that's the great to, thing yeah. about this, right? I mean, when I was the co-host of the Bangkok podcast, show that's still oh, wow. running, by the way. Wow. Me and an, uh, another guy named Greg Jorgensen. He's been an expat in Bangkok for the better part of 20 years. When he and I did the second season of the Bangkok podcast, he'd done the first season on his own. One of the first things I told him is, that, look, we don't have to get together to do this. You and I can do it from our homes. And so got that whole thing connected and figured out. Well, the funny thing was people would occasionally come to Bangkok because uh, it was a show for expats. And so yeah. people would either who did live there or come to our various social events or were traveling to Bangkok, they would ask to meet up and they say, can we come by your studio? <laughs> and what they didn't realize is we didn't have a studio. I mean, the people thought we were in the exact same room, even though, and the funny thing is Greg and I lived about 800 meters from one another in the same part of the giant city of Bangkok. We just happened to wind up living very close to one another, but still we never went to the other person's house to podcast. We always Why? did it this way. And, and no one who didn't understand how the whole thing works didn't realize that we were not sitting there face to face with one another. We weren't, it was just it's all done. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, through the internet. I've done a podcast, you know, Digital Marketing Dive, the first season. We did it in our offices mm-hmm. next to each other. And it was fun, but I found it more distracting. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, literally, I'm looking at you on the screen right now, and I can look over here, I can look over here, I can do whatever I want, but I find this less distracting than <laughs> having someone sit right next to me who might be tapping his leg yeah. or whatever. And, there's, there's, <laughs> and it's just, and also, there's so many other external influences like the room might be echoey because you both have to be in that room sometimes you might pick them up on your mic and it's it's Mm. that that is not fun no double double whoever it is exactly yeah that that cross chalk is not is not good yeah i've I've been through a lot of different scenarios when we first started doing the radio show it was my partner and i side by side then i moved away and so we were doing some things remotely well then we got actually a real live gig on a real live radio show so we went into the radio station we had our own producer which was very strange for my partner mike because he was always the producer he sat in front of the big control board and managed you know all all of the sound and stuff while my job was to run, run the show well now we get to the this radio station he doesn't have anything to do with his hands yeah yeah right he's just kind of sitting there and i'm running the show working with the you know the the board op on the inside and so it it was a very odd feeling for for him and and yeah i've i've done things remote i've done a lot of things as as you travel doing live interviews and stuff Mm -hmm. and and remotely so one of the things about being a podcaster is to to be a well-rounded podcaster you need to be comfortable in a lot of different situations because you never know what the environment's going to be but the cool thing is we can probably make our way through it now i know a lot of podcasters aren't journalists but it mm. sounds like you were a journalist sort of like, were you a journalist beforehand or like, i wouldn't you... i wouldn't consider myself a journalist no i have no, i have no formal journalistic training i i tried my hand at a journalistic style of podcasting in 2014 when my yeah. wife and I decided to go travel. That's when a uh, startup from Gimlet was very popular. And yeah. I said, Hey, I want to do a, a similar thing. I want to document our decision to leave the country and, and where we go in a, in a journalistic style, doing this without any journalistic training whatsoever. But I, we did it. I, I learned a lot mm-hmm. of just by doing it individually. And one of the things I learned is I'm not a good journalist. Um, <laughs> Not really my forte. I'm pretty good on my feet. I'm, I'm a good writer, but as far as being a journalist and digging deep and all that stuff, yeah, not where my not where my brain is set. Have you always had the entrepreneurial streak? Uh, yeah, yes and no. I, I've I've had an entrepreneurial streak, but I've been very fortunate for at least the last half of my life uh, have that parallel to actually a, a good paying day job, uh, or at least before I did the whole traveling thing. So I used to run digital advertising agencies. 
started okay. doing that in around the round of the turn of the century is when that turn happened, of the century. That's funny. which is, which is about the same time I got into podcasting and other stuff. And I'd done freelance work. I, you know, started and stopped a few businesses along the way during all of this. So I, that's one of the great things about being, um, having a, a the stability of a day job and also a stable partner who's also bringing in income in the event that things, you know, go bad because things can and do go bad as an entrepreneur. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of scary, but I have been a straight non-salaried entrepreneur since 2014 and don't see myself changing that anytime in the near future. That's fantastic. So tell us about simpler media a little bit. I mean, because we all know your punti- or if you don't know, you know Eva's pontifications, you gotta listen to them. They're fantastic. But tell us about simpler media. Yeah, so simpler media is something that I started in Thailand. Uh, I recognized in 2016 that podcasting was going through yet another surge. So there was another group of people interested in podcasts, and this time it was businesses. It was business owners who were looking at podcasting saying, that's what we need to do. Well, I remembered back 10 years prior to that when businesses said, you know, I walk around the halls of our business here and I see my people on Facebook all day long. Mm -hmm. I guess we need to get a social media presence because that's where the conversations are happening. And I'm also old enough to remember 10 years before that when businesses drove by an apartment complex and said, gee, no one has taken the yellow pages inside anymore. I wonder mm. how they're researching companies. Oh, they're using the internet. So we Ooh, need to have what's a website. What's this newfangled thing? Yeah, this newfangled thing, the internet. So, you know, it, that's it. You know, the 10 year cycle, and that 10 year cycle now uh, is podcasting, and businesses are interested in podcasting. Well, mm-hmm. you know, as, as a person who used to run digital advertising agencies, I know that businesses would are, are very happy to pay money to capable people to do things the business could do. But the business has other things to do, like, you know, stay in business. So mm. that's why I started Simpler Media. I, I bill it as the my, my clients um, outsource or in-house, but really outsourced podcasting department. They've got a budget, they've got an idea, but they don't have any ability to execute it and know what they want to do. So that's why they come to us. We'll, we'll figure out a way to make them have a, a great sounding podcast where they get out there on the internet and start really bringing people in and uh, talking to customers, talking to employees. We do some internal mm-hmm. podcasting, lots of things like that. So uh, business focused podcast consulting is what we do at Simpler Media. I love it. I love it. So it's, like, it's really what business owners have to realize is that you do what you're good at and you hire for the rest. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, there's nothing stopping you from doing a lot. You know this, Seth, yeah. and I'm sure listeners know this as well. You know, there's really... With armed with the internet today, a Google search and a few YouTube videos, you can learn how to do everything. But businesses don't want to learn how to code a website. Oh God, no! Or or how to code a, a virtual assistant now that runs in a chat window, right? All, all oh these things gosh. are now done for you. Just you know, grab and plug and play. And that's where podcasting is today. Hey, we want to have a podcast. We've got great ideas, but do I want to know about the vagaries of, you know, how many LUFs should I export it at? And, you know, which particular hosting company should we use? And what's the right format? And no, you don't want to do those things. You just want to get in and get it done. So Mm -hmm. that's what we do. Okay. That's awesome. And then, so on one of your shows, you mentioned advancing pot, a few of your shows, you mentioned advancing podcasting.xyz. There's the XYZ right there. There you go. And, um, it took two episodes for me to remember it, to log in and go on, because, you know, apparently Advancing Podcasting is not a memorable name. No, it's not. <laughs> it's generic, but it's advancing, what are you doing? You're advancing podcasting. It's, so that's yeah. your online community. Tell us a little bit about that. What, when did you start that up? Well, I had the idea for the name, I guess, first, Advancing Podcasting, pretty early on, 2019 or so. I, I had this concept of really working on ways that we could make podcasting better. And, and you've listened to podcast pontifications. You know, I say that over and over and over again, right? This is what we're, we're here to make podcasting better. That's make ourselves better as podcasters or make the overall industry of podcasting better. There's lots of services out there that are making it easy to start a podcast, but there's way, way too few of us who are thinking about making things better. And so that was the impetus for the idea of advancing podcasting. It's a collective of people is what I had in my mind who wanted to further the cause of podcasting, not keep podcasting the way it was in 2006, which mm-hmm. a lot of the old school podcasters, that's what they want to do. Podcasting was perfect. 2004, 2006, let's go back to that way. 
Well, that's never going to happen. The world progresses no. forward. And so the idea about advancing podcasting is just that. Let's adapt and grow together as we see how the podcasting mm -hmm. medium can evolve. I finally decided to make it a Discord server, which is all advancing podcasting is. You can go to advancingpodcasting.xyz, sign up, and you're in a Discord server with a hundred or so other people who are all working podcasters, serious podcasters. Some of them do podcasting full time. Yeah. Many of them do it as a side hustle. Uh, but there are people that you're not going to find people who say, What's the best microphone I should buy? Because, no. you know, there's a thousand places you can answer that. You can get that question answered on the Internet. This is much more of a how do I make my show better? How do I do better things? That's really the whole reason that the advancing podcasting community exists. I love it. I love it. And, and the best thing about it is you can build a community. They won't always come. Clearly, they saw Evo and they're like, he's on to something that's come. You know, and, and they <laughs> came and it's great in there. I mean, and of course, Matt Medeiros, who seems to be everywhere, is in there. He's a busy boy, no doubt. He's a busy boy. <laughs> I just interviewed like, a few other people. I'm like, how do I know? Oh, I know you through Matt's podcast. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, mm -hmm. just, it's just Matt's everywhere. Hi, yeah. Matt. And then this is the second <laughs> episode. I just said, hi, Matt. So hopefully he's listening. Excellent. So, all right, great. I know, you, I know you do have a hard stop in yeah. about five, ten minutes. Where is the best place for people to find you? I know you have your robot. You know, if you, I, by the way, <laughs> I learned that if you go from Instagram to Twitter, it yeah. goes from Evo from 2020 to Evo Robot, Evo yeah. Robot, Evo Robot. But then you're without the dash. Where is the best place for people to reach out to you? Yeah, so I, I like to say that I'm available just about every platform you want to be. But if you really want to engage with me, the place I engage most socially is on Twitter. And it's just yeah, Evo yeah. Terra, all one word. As you mentioned, Seth, I, I do have my robot account. When I first started on Twitter back in 2006, whenever it was, a long time ago, I used the the underscore, my Evo underscore Terra. And I also did a few other bad things, you know, like automatically follow everybody mm -hmm. else that follows you. So I grew the account pretty quickly, but I also grew bored <laughs> with the account pretty quickly. So, I, so, so several years ago, I went through and I literally unfollowed everyone. Yeah. from that account and created a brand new account, just Evo Terra, all one word, and started over from scratch. And I leave wow. now, now the Evo underscore Terra is just an automatic retweeting account. Uh, the When I occasionally put things on Instagram, it'll retweet those there. Or the very rare time I'll put something on Facebook, it will share that back. So the, the robot account is there for a, a mixture of all of my things. But the real me is, is on Twitter at Evo Terra. I'm also on LinkedIn, same name. And, I think that's so, where I found you on LinkedIn. Probably so. Probably I, so. I live in LinkedIn. I live in LinkedIn. So this is Evo. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day. I really appreciate this. It's, it's, I'm talking to an OG. This is like amazing. Thanks, Seth. Cheers. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast directory of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Nick Westergaard hosts a great podcast called On Brand. Nick, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. On Brand features my conversations with smart marketers and agency professionals, as well as those working for innovative brands like Adobe, Ben & Jerry's, MasterCard, Salesforce, and more. Tune in and you'll learn how to tell stronger stories and build better brands. Amazing. Where can people subscribe. You can go to onbrandpodcast.com, find the show at marketingpodcast.net, or search for On Brand with Nick Westergaard wherever you get your podcasts. That's two A's in Westergaard. You heard him. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.